Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss a powerful statement read out by a BBC News reporter that challenges the all too prevalent narrative regarding the coronavirus and who it really affects the most. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So for too often in the past and the present, because it still happens, the BBC, like much of the mainstream media, have failed to really hold government to account. They allow politicians to knowingly tell lies on their programmes without calling them out for it. They fail to invite proponents of one side of an argument, but all too often invite those of another. Um, you know, they fall into the ridiculous modern trap of trying to force a debate where actually there isn't a debate with the consequence that all the experts all have the same view on something. So in the names of balance, you get an idiot on the other side who knows nothing about anything. But criticism is worthless if you don't acknowledge things when they are done well. And last week, there was a statement made on the BBC News that for me was quite astounding. It was the sort of statement you will see elsewhere, but you do not see in the mainstream media. It was really remarkable. And in this statement, they made clear that you do not survive the illness because you have great fortitude or great strength of character. They said that the disease is not a great leveler. Um, they described the notion that, it, you know, the fact that it affects rich and poor the same is a myth, they said. And it's a myth, they went further to say, that needs debunking. And this is exactly right. We have this bizarre narrative in the UK that we're all in this together and we all need to pull together. We're not all in this together. You know, it's not true. There are those at the top um, are not as likely to contract this virus as those at the bottom. That some very wealthy people have contracted the disease and, and sadly died from it is generally because they refused to follow the advice from public health experts. They ignored it. They didn't treat it with the necessary level of seriousness and they paid the price for their hubris and that you know doesn't mean we still shouldn't be sympathetic to them but nonetheless they they didn't have to put themselves in that position unless they contracted it very early on but for those at the bottom of society's wrongs even though we're quite late in now we know that we need to socially distance many people can't yes there are also those at the bottom of society's wrongs that are ignoring the scientific instructions that are putting themselves in danger when they don't have to but there are plenty of others that have no choice a london bus driver who was concerned about this but had to carry on working because he couldn't afford to isolate died a few days ago uh, those who can't survive on 80 percent pay or don't even have the option to try are still having to go to work, often cramming themselves onto public transport in order to do so. People working in supermarkets and on the NHS front line, most of whom are paid below the minimum average, are putting themselves in far greater danger than those who are isolated in their homes and maybe pay a visit to the supermarket once a week or once a fortnight. And this is what the BBC presenter, Emily Maitlis, was communicating in her statement. And, and she's the one who made the statement, but I don't want to single her out. This must have, there must have been a number of people in on this as well. Um, she said that shelf stackers, care home workers, bus drivers and nurses are disproportionately lower paid, but are at far greater risk because they are much more likely to come in contact with the virus. She also noted that those who live in tower blocks will find the lockdown a lot tougher. And this is also a vital point to bear in mind. All too often, people judge by their own standards. Why are so many people going outside, they wonder to themselves. Why don't they just sit out in the garden if they want to be out in the sun? Because they live half a mile off the ground. If they're lucky, they've got a window box for their connection to nature. I, you know, and, and, but that's the thing. People often don't see decisions through the lens of other people with different circumstances. So you can perhaps see why I was so surprised that such a statement was ever made on the BBC because it was a powerful socio-political statement to make. And, you know, and it wasn't delivered in an offhand way. It wasn't part of an interview or a debate where a BBC presenter just happened to bring a few points up for the sake of being devil's advocate like a, a good journalist would. It was a pointed exercise 
uh, which was used to introduce something, but it was just the reporter talking to camera for about a minute, uh, which must have had senior editors in the news team to get on board with it as well and to have planned it out. Frankly, you have to see it to believe it. So I've put a link to the Twitter post where I came across it in the description below. Um, and I just wish that more sections of the media would be explaining this. But not just that, that all sections of the media would keep explaining it every day until the country in general had woken up to it. Because I've said it before and I will say it again. The media over the last couple of months has already proven that when they do pose questions to the government about something, when they are reporting on something that's not right, the government tackles it, they change it. A lot of what the government has got right, they've got right as a result of media pressure. I'd like to think it was as a result of public health experts saying to the government, look, you need to do this, that'd be marvellous. That's unfortunately not what's happened. The public health experts have had to go to the media to say, this is what needs to happen. And the media have gone, government, why is this not happening? And then it's been happening. We need more of it. You know, um, the, the media can be a really powerful force for good. And it's statements like that that give you a little bit of hope, but they are too few and far between. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.